Take your hymn books with me and let's all stand together. Page 434. 434. We'll sing Follow On. Let's sing that together. Join me in standing. All three verses. Let's sing that. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go. Where the flowers are blooming and the sweet waters flow. Everywhere he leads me I would follow, follow on. Walking in his footsteps till the crown be won. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus everywhere he leads me. I would follow on. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go. Where the storms are sweeping and the dark waters flow, with his hand to lead me I will never, never fear. Danger cannot fright me if my Lord is near. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I will follow on. Down in the valley or upon the mountain steep, close beside my Savior would my soul ever keep. He will lead me safely, I have trod. On the hills of God, follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Jesus, anywhere, everywhere, I will follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I would follow on. We'll continue singing page 240, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Let's sing the first and last verse together of that, page 240. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. what we have to do amen lean on jesus lean on his everlasting arms well praise the lord for that well we had good news from uh, the doctor on monday and martha they didn't find any cancer cells at all no cancer cells in her eyes not only that but her vision has been restored to 2020 vision believe it or not she looked she lost that vision. She didn't have any vision in that eye, and it all came back. So we praise the Lord, and so I let her drive the car today. You know what? I stayed in, but I let her drive. But, but anyway, she's uh, and she feels well, so we praise the Lord. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. And she doesn't have to go back for three months, and so we praise the Lord for that. God is so good to us, so we rejoice in that. Thank you for your prayers. We need to... Uh, uh, Tammy Fernandez had that back surgery on yesterday, and she's home. And so we need some people to sign up to bring some meals over. Uh, Martha is going to bring the meal over tomorrow for her, uh, for that family. And uh, but we need. Uh, I have this note from uh, Sabra. 
And uh, Jackie, who, sh who should they sign up with? You should they? Okay. And so if you'd, you'd sign up with, yes? Okay. Oh yeah, we'll bring it over tomorrow. Thank you for doing that. So Martha's gonna do that. She brought it over today. So how many meals do we need, Jackie, do you know? Probably for about a... Two. Well, we could sign up for at least a week or two weeks. How many people would sign up tonight with Jackie? Let me see your hands. You'll sign up to bring a meal over. How many will sign up tonight? One, two, three, four, five. So uh, right at the end of the service, Jackie will be out there in the hallway. If you'll sign up, if anybody else will do that, we'll try to get it taken care of. Because Martha, tomorrow, that'll be uh, that'll be six. And, and so we can get just a weekend taken care of anyway. That would be a help. So uh, we'd appreciate if you'd do that. Let's bow our heads and ask God to bless in the service tonight, dear Lord. We're grateful to be here in the house of God tonight. We're thankful, Father, for your goodness to us for uh, the blessings you've already given to us this week. I thank you for Martha, Father, and the good news from the doctor, and, and we just rejoice there. And I pray for Tammy, Father, and for her healing completely. I pray, Father, that uh, you would just relieve all that pain and, and just, uh, Father, good, give her good health. I know that they want to serve the Lord, and I pray that you would help them. Now, bless our people, Father, as they bring the meals. I thank you for Tammy already bringing the meal over to her and then uh, these other folks that are going to sign up. Father, help us to have enough people to be a real encouragement to these dear folk. Again, we thank you for just being here in the house of God tonight, and we pray, Father, for your blessing to be bestowed upon these people, Father. Help them to know your great blessing just by being here in the house of God tonight. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing if you would. We're going to sing the chorus, Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Let's sing that chorus together one time and then we'll greet one another. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. You turn and greet those around you as the pianist plays.
let's sing that chorus together again. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. You may be seated. Ushers are going to come to receive the offering tonight. Brother uh, Jeremy Rowland started, uh, helped start another church there in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's called the New Beginning Independent Baptist Church. The first service, they had 37 in attendance. So pray for that new church there. Uh, Archie and Ruth Perez uh, are back in Uruguay. Remember, they stopped by here and uh, met with us for uh, service. Then uh, the uh, Brother Rajus, uh, they're uh, our missionary in India. They just dedicated two new church buildings, and uh, they have five graduates from their school. So we praise the Lord for that, that that's going forward. And uh, Luke and Jessica Marie are here in the States, they've traveled 22,000 miles already on deputation back here in the States. And uh, they're going to be returning to Bolivia at the end of August. But that's a lot of miles already to travel. <laughs> wow. Can so pray for them. They said they've had some near uh, accidents, you know. So we need to pray for them as they're, as they're traveling around. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7, God loveth a cheerful giver. I, here's an article that I, uh, someone gave to me. One of the most liberal givers in a church said to a friend who praised him for his generosity, you make a mistake. I'm not generous. I'm by nature extremely cheap. But uh, when I was a young man, I forced myself to give. At first, I tell you, it was hard for me to part with even one penny. But I persisted until the habit of liberality was formed. He said, now I love to give. <laughs> you know what? I praise the Lord for my parents teaching us to give. I've never had a problem with giving to the Lord. I just, I don't have a problem with it. And uh, because as a ch child, they taught us to give, and I've just been giving my whole life. And so I think it's a great blessing when you can do that. Let's uh, bow our heads and ask God to bless in the offering tonight. Dear Lord, we pray that you'll bless in this offering tonight. We pray that you'll use it, Father, to uh, take the gospel into all of the world. Thank you for our people. Help us, Father, to be joyful givers, to love to give. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your hymn book with me one last time, page 363. You can remain seated. We'll sing Living for Jesus, first, second, and last verse together. <laughs> Living for Jesus, a life that is true, striving to please Him in all that. Yes. 
Father, on Thee and Thee only, give me a thirst for Thy presence divine. Lord, keep my focus on loving Thee wholly. Purge me from earth, turn my heart after but to love thee with all of my heart. Father, fill with thy spirit and fit me for service. Let love for Christ every motive inspire. Teach me to follow in selfless submission. Be thou my joy and my soul's one desire, a passion for thee, O Lord, set a fire in my soul and a thirst for my God. to love thee with all of my heart. Take your Bible, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 18. <clears throat> Sunday I'll be preaching a message, Honor Thy Mother, from Exodus 20 and verse 12. Boy, if you want your, you want if you ever wanted your children to hear a message, you need to bring them to this message on Sunday, because <laughs> I'm going to tell them what the Bible says about honoring your mother, and uh, so people ought to come and get your family to come on Sunday for this message, honor thy mother, and uh, I know that uh, God's word will speak to them. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 18, verses 16 through. 19. I'll let you remain seated there, verses 16 through 19. A man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him before great men. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. The lot causeth contentions to cease, and parteth between the mighty. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. These uh, proverbs here talk about how the wise live for others. If you are wise, you will live for others. It's probably a, a very difficult thing for us to do because we want to live for ourselves. We're very selfish. But this, these proverbs here teach us to live for others. And if you're wise, you will live for others. So let's look at this tonight. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I pray that you would bless your word as it's preached tonight. I pray, Father, that you would help us to truly be wise and to live for others. There's so many in the world today that just want to live for their self. But the greatest joy comes from living for others, and those who are the wisest will live for others rather than themselves. Now, Father, bless the preaching of the Word tonight and help us to learn this truth that's taught in these Proverbs, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 
There was a great conductor by the name of Leonard Bernstein. You probably heard the name before, a great, great conductor. He was once asked this question, what is the hardest instrument to play in the orchestra? What is the hardest instrument to play in the orchestra? And his answer was this, second fiddle. Second fiddle. He said, everybody wants to be the first violinist. Everybody does. He said, but the hardest instrument to play is second violin. Everybody wants to be first violin, but it's hard to get someone to play second violin. However, if you do not have second violin, you won't have any harmony. You have to have first violin and you have to have second violin in order for there to be harmony. What I'm saying by that is this. We need to live for others if we're going to have harmony. If we're going to have harmony in our church, we have to live for others. The only way that we can have harmony in this church is to live for others. If we're just living for ourselves, if we just want what we want and nothing else will satisfy us, then you know what? We won't have harmony in the church. Churches have trouble because everybody wants their way. If everybody wants their way, then we're not going to have harmony. We need to live for others. The wise live for others. Many years ago, I heard someone preach a message and they said the way to have joy is to live for others. There's an acrostic for joy. Jesus, others, and yourself. Joy. Jesus, others, and yourself. Joy. And you know what? When you put Jesus first, and you put others before you, then you know what? You will have true joy. But the Bible teaches us that. In Matthew 6.33, First of all, we're to put Christ. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, putting Christ first. Then put others second. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4. The Bible says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Christ, others, and then self. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 5. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. You want to have real joy? Jesus, others, and yourself. The wise will live for others. If you're wise, you will live for others tonight. So we look at these Proverbs. First of all, look at verse number 16. The wise show kindness to others. A man, a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. The wise live for others by showing kindness to others. The wise live for others, first of all, by showing kindness to others. If you are living for others, then you're going to show kindness to others. We talked about kindness tonight. We have this family that, uh, that, that needs help. Uh, Ms. Fernandez, Tammy Fernandez has had this back surgery and they need some help. And we can be of help. We can show kindness to them. Now, look what this verse says. Don't misunderstand this verse. Look what it says. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. It's talking about we show kindness by giving gifts to people. We're not talking, it's not talking about bribing them. It's not even talking about influencing them. But it's talking about giving a gift to show kindness and thoughtfulness. There's a difference. Do you know that? There's a difference. We're not trying to bribe them. We're not even trying to influence them. But we give them a gift to show kindness and to show thoughtfulness. If we give, uh, bring some food over to these people, you know, we're not trying to influence them. We're not, uh, uh, we're not doing it selfishly. But what we want to do is show them kindness. Amen? We want to show them kindness. That's why we do it. And thoughtfulness that we care about them. That's what it's all about. We're not bribing them. 
But the Bible says in the last part of this verse, and we're not doing it for this reason, but look what it says, and bringeth him before great men. What it says, when we show kindness, when, uh, when we show thoughtfulness, then you know what? God will give us other opportunities as a result of that. But we don't do it for that reason. Understand that? We're not doing it for that reason. But you know what? God will use that and give us other opportunities as a result of that. If we, have, we have to have the right heart. Our heart has to be right when we're doing that. So, uh, it's an effective tool, especially in this world of greedy materialism, isn't it? <laughs> in fact, is when you give something to someone, they, they wonder, what do you want? <laughs> have, you, have they ever said that? You say, here, here you can have this, and they say, well, what do you want? I don't want anything. No, no, what do you, what do you want? No, 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 I don't, I don't want, no, no, what do you want? No, I, you know, it's hard to convince people that you're not trying to get something out of them. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 20. And say ye moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And afterward, I, I will see his face, pre-adventure, he will accept me. He was trying to use a, a gift there, the Bible tells us. In Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 6, many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. We give gifts to show kindness and thoughtfulness, not to try to bribe someone, not to try to influence them, but we do that to show kindness. I, I, I had something that happened many years ago. I had a family, uh, this is right after, I mean, I, we were still meeting the DAV hall. I, I had a family visiting the church, and they liked the ch church, and it was a a large family, and and they, I visited with them, and they, and the man said, "Well, you know, we really like the church, and uh, we're really praying about joining the church." And I said, "Well, that's wonderful. I'm praying for you." And uh, and I didn't see him after that. And I so I called him, and he said, "Well, we joined this other church." I said, "Well." I was praying for God's will. And uh, he said, well, but uh, he said, we'll see you sometime. And I said, okay. But I, I was just praying for God's will. I always pray for God's will. I don't pray anybody in here. I just pray for God's will. We have, I was telling some people, we've got a number of people visiting our church. And I'm praying for God's will for them. I, I have a list of people that are visiting our church. I have a whole list, and I pray for them every day and pray for God's will. Well, let me tell you what happened. You know, I just went on. Some years went by. I, you know, I just kind of forgot about that. And, and this person came to me one day. And uh, they said, well, uh, you know that family? I said, yeah. And uh, they said, well, do you know what happened there? I said, no, I don't, I don't know what happened. I was just praying for the Lord's will. I thought that they were going to join our church, but they didn't, and so I, I just went on. He said, well, let me tell you what happened. The pastor of that other church, he took that man down to the mall and bought him a brand new suit. And then that guy, as a result of that, he felt like he had to join that church. I goes, oh, <laughs> I wish you hadn't told me. I didn't want to know that. I said, it doesn't make me feel good that somebody would do something like that. He said, well, don't worry about it because they're not going to that church now anyway. I said, well, do you know what? Bribing and trying to influence someone, that doesn't work. You know what? It doesn't. But showing kindness and thoughtfulness, that works, doesn't it? God said, I'll bless that. And God said, in that verse, he said, I'll give you greater opportunities. If you've got the right, it's a heart. It's our heart. Our heart has to be in the right place, you see. Our heart. And that's what it's talking about. And my dear wife, I mean, she uh, will take cookies and bake cakes and so forth and bring it around to the neighbors. I was talking with someone uh, just uh, yesterday about uh, this very thing, and there's a family that lives across the street, and uh, we've been witnessing to those people for some time, and, and somebody else that knows that family says, 
You know, you've been an influence on them. You might not know it, but you have. You know, somebody else is telling us that. They said, and don't quit. And so I said, well, we're not planning on quitting. <laughs> we're trying to keep trying to give them a witness. You see, we need to show kindness. But it's in the heart. That kindness is in the heart. That thoughtfulness is in the heart. And we have to understand that. That's why we want to, and the Bible says, the wise live for others by showing kindness to them. Here's an example of that. Paul Harvey told about this boy that uh, won a contest at McDonald's. McDonald's was having a contest, and, and, uh, and th this boy won the contest, and, it, and he won a brand new bike. And so they went down to McDonald's, and they presented him with a bike. The manager of the McDonald's presented him with a bike, and there were a lot of people there, and they gave him an applause, you know, and, and then he took the bike, and they put the bike in the back of his dad's car, and they were on their way home. And this boy, just a boy, he said, Dad, he said, I've already got a bike. He said, I've got a friend at school, and he doesn't have a bike. And I want to give this bike to him. And his dad said, okay, son. And you know, they, before they went home, they took that bike to that house. And that boy took that bike out, knocked on the door. And that little boy came to the door. And he says, here's a bike for you. And man, was he happy. Oh, boy, was he ever happy. And that little boy that gave the bike away, he was happy too. See, that's what kindness and thoughtfulness will do. That makes you happy. That makes you even happier in getting something, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's like Paul Harvey says, now the rest of the story. I don't know who it was, but someone called the newspaper, the local newspaper, and told them, and they wrote an article about that little boy and how he had got that bike from McDonald's and he took it and gave it to his little friend there at school. The manager at McDonald's read that and he called that family up and he says, you'll come down here because I, I got something for you. I want you to bring your whole family because I'm going to, you can have whatever you want and I've got something for you. And he went down there and that manager at McDonald's reached in his pocket and pulled out a check for $100. And he says, here's $100 for your kindness. And that boy thanked him. They got in the car, and on the way home, that little boy said, Mom, Dad, let's stop by the bike store. He said, I want to get a helmet for my friend with that money that they gave to me. So he got him a new helmet. You know, that's kindness and that's thoughtfulness, amen? The wise live for others by showing kindness. We ought to show kindness. We think about ourselves all the time, you know. Show some kindness to some people. Be thoughtful to some people. The wise show kindness to others. The wise live for others. Number two, the wise live for others by, the Bible tells us, by not making biased assumptions of others. Look at verse number 17. This is an interesting verse. Kind of goes with some of the stuff that we talked about last Wednesday, I remember. Look at what it says in verse 17. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. The wise live for others by not making biased assumptions of others. If you are wise, you will live for others by not making biased assumptions of others. In other words, you're going to Look at what it says there. Look at that word search. That word searcheth him, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. 
The, it, what it's talking about is probing. It's talking about uncovering. It's talking about finding the complete truth. Before you make a biased assumption about somebody, you search it through, amen? You don't just jump to conclusions. Remember we talked about jump to conclusions last week? You don't just jump to some conclusion, but you, you weigh it out. You make sure. Even though someone that you may know may say something about, then you can't take it. For, you just can't take what they say. They might be mistaken. They might have heard it from somebody else. So you need to be careful. Make sure that you look at all the information. You study it through. And then some people, uh, you know, they have self-interest. That they're very close to the situation. They're not going to give you all the truth. They're going to give you what they feel about it. And that might not necessarily be true. So you don't jump to a conclusion. You don't make uh, biased assumptions of others. Uh, you're very careful about that. Uh, and uh, you'll be wise. The wise live for others by not making those biased assumptions of others. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you have to weigh the matter out before you jump to a conclusion. I'm afraid that many of our news medias today, they're jumping to conclusions. They don't tell you all the truth. I just... I've basically stopped watching a lot of it, you know. I just don't because you can't even believe what they're saying. It used to be the news years ago. They would give you both sides of the story. They would let you, you know, they would give you the story. Now they're, it's all slanted with stuff. I just, I can't take it. I don't want to listen to them tell their lies. They taint the truth. They don't give it all. We need to be careful about these biased assumptions not make biased assumptions of others be careful about that weigh this thing out make sure that we have all of the information before we make some decision before we assume something I chuckled at his pastor told about how they were having a missions conference at their church and they had a missionary from Africa, and he brought a man who had been converted there, an African man, brought him, and brought him here to the States. I thought that, that would be a neat thing, you know. I've seen that happen before. I, uh, I think uh, we had it maybe one time we had it happen here. But I think that would be a neat thing, a missionary bringing someone from that country and traveling around. I think it would be very influential, don't you? I think it would probably cost uh, a, a lot of money for them to do that, but I think it would be very influential to people to have, here's an actual convert, someone that got converted there, uh, you know, in Africa, or converted in Brazil, wherever. I think that would be, uh, I think that would be very good. Anyway, th that's what happened. Missionary from Africa brought this uh, African man with him and brought him to the missions conference, and they were having their missionary dinner, just like we do, and and that uh, man from Africa sat down there, and one of the deacons from the church sat down next to him. And he took it for granted this was an African man that didn't speak English. And so he sat there, and uh, he thought that this man probably had never been to America before, and he didn't know about the food and so forth. And so he was trying to be kind to him. <laughs> and so uh, they passed some food, and, and uh, I don't know what in the world it was, maybe spaghetti or something, you know, and... And this African man is kind of looking at it. And, and so the, the deacon, he puts some in his plate and uh, he takes a bite of it and he goes, chomp, chomp, mmm, good, chomp, chomp, mmm, good. And then he puts some in the man's plate and, and uh, the African's plate and he takes and he takes some of that, probably hard to get up, you know, and he's just trying to eat that. And finally he, he takes a bite of it and he goes, mmm, good, mmm, good. And uh, then... Uh, then uh, the deacon gets some coffee and he pours some coffee. He pours some coffee in his cup and, and he drinks his. He goes, mmm. He goes, uh, uh, glug, glug, mmm, good. And he pours some into the, uh, into the African man's cup and he takes a drink. He goes, mmm, good, mmm, good. And uh, about that time, it was time for the missionary to Africa to speak. And so he got up there to, to speak and he said, I brought a guest from Africa, all the way from Africa. And he said, I, I just want him to come and, and I'm going to introduce him to you. And so he invited the man. The man came up and stood there and he, and he introduced him. And uh, this man from Africa, he started speaking and he spoke in the purest la English language that you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> that deacon was sliding down in his seat back there. You know, he was so 
embarrassed. He had assumed the wrong thing, you know. After that man finished talking, he went back to his seat, sat right next to the deacon, and says, blab, 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 mm, good. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be careful what we assume, amen? <laughs> I love that story. The wise live for others. How do we live for others? First of all, by showing kindness to others. Give them gifts, amen? Show kindness and thoughtfulness. Secondly, uh, by not making biased assumptions of others. And then thirdly, the wise seek peace with others. In verses 18 and 19, the lot causeth contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. So the wise live for others by seeking peace with others. If you're wise, if you're wise, you will live for others by seeking to make peace with others. There's always contention. There's always difficulty. There's always conflicts. Do you know what? If you're wise, you will seek to make, uh, have a resolution with individuals, uh, reconciliation with individuals. Now, what is it talking about? It says, uh, the lot causeth con contentions to seek. They would draw lots. If they had contentions in the Old Testament days, if they had, uh, if, if, if there was a problem uh, between two individuals, uh, there was a disagreement, you know what they would do? They would actually draw lots. They would draw, and, 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 and as a result of that, if someone got the largest, they would sometimes have a stick, they would draw the largest stick. If they, if they got the largest stick, then that meant that the, the disagreement would fall on that guy's side and it would be settled. They took that to mean, in the Old Testament days, they took it to mean that that was God's will. Whatever that lot, whatever lot they drew, that was God's will. And so that guy, that would mean that if that guy drew the, the lot, then, then, uh, then he won the disagreement. I mean, it was his, a fall on his side. That's the way they would settle disagreements. And that's what it's talking about. The lot causeth contentious, contentions to cease. In other words, that would be the end of it. But, of course, in, in the days that we're living, God doesn't tell us to draw lots. I, I don't see us. He doesn't tell us. You say, well, that's a great way to solve some problems, man. We we'll just draw some lots. No, that, the Bible doesn't tell us to do that. You know, they didn't have the Holy Spirit like we do today, man. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit when we get saved. God has given us other ways of doing it. And... Uh, and he wants us to settle these things. In Matthew chapter 18, beginning with verse number 15, he tells us about uh, what we should do if we have a problem with someone. If you, have, if you have a problem with someone in the church, you have a disagreement with someone in the church, the Bible tells us there to go to that brother. You're to go to that brother yourself and take care of that situation. Try to uh, have reconciliation. It's not to confront them and to, to say, listen, you've been doing wrong. I, it's not just to, to do that. You know what? It's to make reconciliation with that individual. You understand that? Matthew chapter 18 is talking about making, re making reconciliation with someone who's offended you. I think people use that as a battling ram or to hit somebody over the head with it, but that's not what it's there for. It's there so that we would have harmony in the church. Amen? So we have harmony between one another. God knew what kind of people we are, and we're going to have contentions, and we've got disagreements, and God said, this is, a, this is what you need to do. You need to settle those things. We have the Holy Spirit. And we're not to go to law against people. We're not to file lawsuits. Some people, they do that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 8 through, no, 1 through 8. It talks about not uh, having lawsuits between us as Christians. It's talking about in the church. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. In other words, in the church, we're to take care of those problems. Amen. And that doesn't mean to say that you can't, uh, if you have uh, trouble or uh, something outside, that uh, that can't go to, in that direction. It can't. But this is talking about in the church. We're not supposed to have a lawsuit here in the church. We're not to be suing one another. Hey, that brother offended me. I'm going to sue him. No, we're not to do that. We're not to, he said we're not to. Why? Because my friend, it's a bad testimony to the rest of the world if we did that. Amen? Hey, look at that church over there. Those people are all over one. Man, alive. Man, there are a bunch of contentious people over there. I don't want to have any part of that church. No, we've been indwelt by the Spirit of God and 
And we yield to the Spirit of God, and, and we're to settle those things. Sometimes, in fact, there in Matthew chapter 18, it talks about going to that person, just you and that person, trying to settle. If you can't do that, then you bring another person. Why? To work as a mediator, amen? To try to help to solve that thing. Sometimes we have to have a mediator to solve a problem, to solve a difficulty. I've been used many times to help people solve a problem, and we can do that. But notice here the, the Bible says, oh man, uh, in verse 19, a brother offended is hard to be won in a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Man, when, uh, when you offend someone, the weak and carnal Christian, they're easily offended, and when they're offended, they said it's harder than uh, it is for an army to go in and take a city <laughs> sometimes, you know, because people are just, they get offended, and they're easily. By the way, the, 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 the people that get offended the most in the church are the most carnal Christians. <laughs> so if you're easily offended, I'm not, I'm just telling you what the Bible says, you're just carnal. You're fleshly. You say, where do you just find that? Oh, I'm going to show you. I'm not going to just tell you. 1 Corinthians 3.3, 3, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? 1 Corinthians 3.3, 3. go ahead and memorize that one, that's a good one. Philippians 2.3, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem the other better than themselves. We're to solve those things. You know what? We're to seek peace. We're to make peace. Boy, in the Bible, there's a lot of brothers that didn't get along. You notice? <laughs> Cain and Abel, Isaac and Ishmael, Jacob and Esau, Amnon and Absalom. We're to seek peace. We're to seek peace. Do you know, when we seek peace, and you know my heart, I, I try to seek peace. I try to be a peacemaker. I forgive people. I try to be kind to people. That doesn't mean, let me tell you, that doesn't mean that I trust them. I can forgive someone, and I can be kind to someone, but that doesn't mean that I trust them. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm going to be kind. And I'm going to be forgiving. And we can. Because I want to have peace. But sometimes, we don't trust them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just shake your head like that. But we can be forgiving, can't we? And we can have peace. I can have peace and I can talk with them and I can be kind. I can go any place in this town, I can go any place in this area and I don't have any hard feelings about anybody or anything. But that doesn't mean that I trust all of those people that have <laughs> offended and hurt me, you know? <laughs> I just wanted to make that perfectly clear. There's so many problems. I mean, the church has a, a history from the very beginning. We look, at, we look at the Bible. We're looking at the Bible, and we see the church from the very beginning. There were conflicts, and there were differences of agreement. There were divisions in the first church at Corinth. I mean, the whole book is talking about the divisions they had in the church. A lot of things, squabbles and different things like that. It makes the... I think the angels in heaven weep over all of that stuff, you know what? <laughs> it's a shame. I talk with people all the time. They say, well, I'm not going to go to church because they're trouble that they, they had. I, I mean, but we can be forgiving, and we ought to. We ought to be kind. We ought to seek peace. Life is too short not to. Isn't life short? I mean, it's just passing by so quickly. This year is already... I, I, it just seemed like I was given Christmas presents yesterday. It's 
passing by. Did you ever hear, maybe some of you read the book, uh, King Solomon's Minds? Did you ever read that book? I know they made, uh, they made a couple of movies about that, King Solomon's Minds. It was a book written by Sir Henry Ryder Haggard. And of course, uh, the characters is Alan Quartermain. He's, Alan Quartermain was actually a big game hunter is what he was, but uh, I think in the movies they made him something else, but <laughs> that's what, what he was. But he was on a, uh, if you read the book, you know he was on a steamer. He was headed for Natal, and uh, he met Sir Henry Curtis. Sir Henry Curtis was there with Captain Good. And uh, Captain Good was uh, Sir Henry Curtis's guide. They'd been to Africa, and uh, that's, that's the story. And Quartermain asked him what he was he doing there in Africa, and so he begins to tell the story. And that's how it all, that's how it all begins. Well, if you read the book or you saw one of the movies, you know, I think they had a, a couple that they wrote about that, but nonetheless, he tells the story. It's an interesting story because it's about Sir Henry uh, Curtis. He said, well, it's a long story. The reason I was there in Africa was to find my brother. I went to find my brother. He said, my brother and I, his brother Neville, Neville, his brother and him had, had had a disagreement. And as a result of that, they weren't speaking. And, uh, and so there was a long time there that they didn't speak at all. Maybe, you know, this happens in families, and it happens with individuals. It happens in churches. It happens. We, they don't speak. They weren't speaking. And then something else happened. Their father died. And when their father died, they're, they're from England, they had a law back then that if you didn't have a will, then everything would go to the oldest uh, child. And Sir Curtis, uh, Sir Henry Curtis, he was the oldest son, and so, uh, and the father didn't have a will. And so everything went to him. Since he and his brother were not talking, they weren't getting along, he just didn't do anything. He said, you know what, I did wrong. He said, I should have called my brother aside and said, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divide it between, we'll divide it between us. But he said, we weren't talking, and so I made things worse. They went, and that's what happens. Things get worse, don't they? They weren't talking, and then he made things worse by not saying, listen, Let's divide these, uh, look, you know, we need to divide this. Just because it's coming to me, we'll divide it. But he didn't do that. He said, I didn't do right. My brother became even angrier at me. He sold everything that he had. He withdrew all of his money that he had in the bank, and he went to Africa to look for King Solomon's mind. Without saying a word to me, he left. He thought, well, he'll be back. But you know what? He didn't come back. He did not come back. He said, after some time, I'm talking several years, it's like two or three years, and he didn't hear from his brother. He didn't hear anything, and blood is thicker than water, isn't it? And he began to worry about his brother. I, he hadn't heard anything. He didn't know what happened to his brother, and so he made some contacts. He called some uh, people there in Africa to see if they'd seen his brother. They said that they saw his brother. The last time they saw his brother, he was heading through uh, a desert place, a place by uh, Kuka Analand. <laughs> That was when he was last seen. No one had heard from him. And so he decided he was going to go look for his brother. He did wrong. He knew that he did wrong, and he's going to go look for his brother. And so he got Captain Good and the, to be his guide, and they went. 
to search for his brother. And they made it across the desert place and they made it to this area, an oasis. And there he found his brother. His brother had had an accident. He was incapacitated. He could not leave. All he could do was wait for someone to come. And he came. If he hadn't come, his brother may, may have died there. But he came, and when he saw his brother, they embraced, and all was forgotten and forgiven. And they thought all the time that was wasted, all the time that was wasted, and they made peace. That's a good story. <laughs> Be good if all the stories ended that like that. But you know, if you're wise, the wise live for others by showing kindness to others. The wise live for others by not making biased assumptions of others. The wise live for others by seeking peace with others. Are you wise? How we need to be wise. We need to pray for God to give us wisdom. Let's bow our heads. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. How we need wisdom. <laughs> Are you wise? Are you living for others? Do you, if you don't get your own way, are you offended? Do you show kindness? Do you make assumptions of people without having all the facts, without seeing everything, without weighing every uh, fact? <laughs> Do you need to grow in wisdom? You say, I need to grow in wisdom. Would you pray for me tonight? I need to grow in wisdom. Would you pray for me tonight? Slip your hands up all through the building. I need to grow in wisdom. Would you pray for me tonight? Here's my hand. I need to grow in wisdom. Would you pray for me? Thank you. Thank you. Hands all through the building. Show kindness to others. Thoughtfulness. Not make biased assumptions. Seek to make peace with others. Doesn't mean that you trust everything that they do, but you can still make peace. Maybe tonight you'll pray for someone that is not being very wise. They don't show kindness. They make biased assumptions. They, they're at odds with others. Maybe they're even at odds with you. As Christians, our job is just to make peace with them. If they don't want to make peace with us, then that's up to them. But as Christians, we're to make peace. We do our part. If they don't want to do their part, that's up to them. Maybe you'll pray for them tonight. You say, I know someone I need to pray for, someone that needs more wisdom in their life. And I'm going to pray for them tonight. Would you pray with me? I'm going to pray for them. Would you pray with me? Here's my hand. I'm going to pray for them. Would you pray with me? I will. Then there's one more question. The wisest decision that you'll ever make is to trust in Christ as your Savior. Is there one here tonight that would say, yeah, I need to trust in Christ as my Savior? I don't know for sure that I'm on my way to heaven. I need to trust in Christ as my Savior. Anyone like that tonight? I'm not sure that I'm saved and on my way to heaven. Would you pray for me tonight? I'm going to have a word of prayer in just a moment. And then we'll have the invitation. And I hope that you'll avail yourself to this altar. I hope that you'll come. Pray for God to give you wisdom. Pray for God to give others wisdom. Pray for God to give us wisdom here at this church. That we might be kind. We might be thoughtful. I hope that you'll come in just a moment. Might have peace. I like what he said. The only way to have harmony is to have someone who will play second fiddle. Are we willing to play second fiddle? To live for others? that we might have harmony, that's what it'll take, you know. We won't have any harmony if everybody wants to be first fiddle. Dear Lord, be with the invitation here tonight. You've seen the hands and you know everyone's heart here tonight. You know if our hearts are right with you or not. And dear Lord, it's my prayer that we would be right with you. It's our pr my prayer 
that we'll get our hearts right with you. And Father, I pray that you'll make us wise. Help us to be wise, to live for others. Dear Lord, give us wisdom. Wisdom. Like Solomon had, give us wisdom, great wisdom, to make right choices, right decisions, show kindness to others, not to make biased assumptions, to seek peace with others. Give us wisdom tonight. Be with this invitation time, Father. You've touched our hearts. You've spoken to our hearts. Now, Father, I pray that folks would come. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet? God spoke in your heart tonight. Why don't you come tonight? As we begin to sing, why don't you come tonight? God has spoken your heart. Has spoken your heart. Has spoken your heart. Has spoken your heart.